In the previous video, we discussed the extreme efficiency benefits of spinning a drone with the addition of these wings. If you haven't seen that yet, go check it out. I'll link it in the description. In this video, we're going to see how efficient this unique design is, not when it's spinning, but if we fly forward on the wing like a regular airplane. We'll take a close look at some forward flight data and compare it to the hovering power we found in the last video. This definitely isn't the first spinning drone concept ever built, but it is one of the only ones to my knowledge that was specifically designed to hover like a regular multirotor, spin for more hovering efficiency, and finally go into forward flight where it flies on the wings like an airplane. This design from the Singapore University of Technology and Design called Thor is a similar concept and my design was definitely inspired by it. But it does look like non-spinning hover was not necessarily a goal for them since the thrust vectoring required to maintain pitch control is much less responsive than variable motor RPM like my design. This is why I went for three motors rather than two, so that both roll and pitch can be stabilized with this more responsive and common multi-rotor control method when I'm flying around in a regular hover. The trade-off here is that forward flight with my design will be less efficient than a bi-wing since you have this large vertical surface remaining that creates drag but no lift. Still, a multimodal design like this can offer many benefits over regular multirotors or airplanes, which is why I'm so interested in it. Since this thing was already built from last time, the only thing left to do was uninstall it from my ceiling where it kept me cool all summer and head out to the field to gather some more power draw data in forward flight. I 3D printed an aerodynamic nose cone to reduce drag out of lightweight PLA filament, which uses magnets to snap on and cover the electronics. What I'm doing here is flying around at different angles of attack at constant altitude and collecting power draw data from the motors. I reconfigured my LiDAR and altitude hold code from last time so that the LiDAR now faces down while in forward flight. I also tweaked the code so that the reported altitude reading is adjusted based on the angle the LiDAR makes with the ground. This gives a reliable altitude estimate regardless of pitch angle. So now, as I command different pitch angles with my transmitter stick, the altitude hold code will automatically adjust the throttle to maintain a relatively constant altitude. This is known as trimming the airplane, which essentially just means fine adjusting the controls to find a steady state of the aircraft that we're interested in. In this case, constant altitude cruise at a commanded angle of attack. But before we take a look at the data I collected, I wanted to discuss a few cool applications that a spinning VTOL drone like this can be used for. You definitely can't just strap a regular camera on it and expect to get good video while it's spinning and hover. My answer to that is simple. Just stop spinning when you want to start taking a video. This could increase flight time on a camera drone by spinning when the operator is waiting to start filming and stop spinning when it's time to get that sweet shot. In a future video, I will definitely tackle this spinning camera problem, and the solution is much simpler than you think. But who said drones need to carry a camera to be useful? This platform could be used as a loitering signal repeater for search and rescue, where you could quickly deploy a network of these to hover over a disaster area to provide support communications to first responders. Because spinning is much more efficient, they can stay in the air for much longer. And because they can fly in forward flight, they get to where they need to go much faster and more efficiently. And finally, the wackiest idea I could think of is to use the LiDAR as it's spinning to map the 3D environment. High-end LiDAR systems already spin themselves, so why not just use the drone's rotation instead? Here, I've clearly detected my fence using the LiDAR. This could be used for autonomous motion planning in unknown environments, something I've covered in a previous video. Now let's get back to that data I collected to see how much power it takes to fly in forward flight once and for all. I didn't bother to add any way of measuring airspeed, so instead we're going to look at power draw versus angle of attack to maintain a constant cruising altitude. As we start to pitch over into forward flight, you can see there's a clear minimum. This is basically where the vehicle's lift to drag ratio as a whole is maximized for most efficient forward flight. This is a very high angle of attack, so the wings are definitely stalled and not at their most efficient, but that's almost expected. I primarily geared this design towards spinning efficiency, whereas forward flight was a secondary goal. So let's compare this minimum forward flight power to the minimum spinning and regular hover power from the last video. Funnily enough, spinning hover is the most efficient, with forward flight coming in second. This is probably because of the massive vertical surface creating drag and no lift in forward flight. But it is an interesting result to have a multimodal VTOL that's more efficient in hover than forward flight. Typically, hover is much less efficient for most VTOL designs. 
I could probably get even more spinning hover efficiency by using a non-symmetrical airfoil and twisting the blades, but the symmetric nature of the blades as I have them is what allows for forward flight in the first place. I could also switch to a bicopter design like Thor to get more forward flight efficiency, but then my regular hover would be less robust. This design is very much a trade-off to accomplish this multimodal capability, but you can ultimately balance these trade-offs to get the results you need for whatever your application is. My application is just to show off the principles and hopefully teach you something cool. Anyways, using these power consumption measurements for each flight mode, we can then estimate the maximum flight times with my battery. I've been able to validate the regular hover and forward flight time estimates, but not the spinning hover, yet. One difficult problem I've been putting off that's been preventing a spinning hover duration test is directional control while it's spinning, because right now I don't have any way to prevent it from drifting around. This is the next problem I want to tackle, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Until then, looks like I'll be making some repairs while I kick myself for crashing before getting all the shots I needed for this video. Cheers. Oh no! <laughs> That's not good. I think the only thing that broke is the 3D printed center hub. Everything else looks pretty intact.